In this video, I'm rolling with Crystal again. I have a prior round with her on the channel in the Gi. I'll put that in the description. This is me fooling around before the match. So, Crystal's been a blue belt since around Christmas time. They got their blue belts together. They also have three kids that train at the academy, Robbie, Logan, and Skyler. That's Robbie refereeing, refereeing the match right now. So here we go. She's in my half butterfly, it looks like, or butterfly guard, and I was able to get a really nice butterfly sweep by controlling her arm and kicking with my hook. So here I'm on my elbows. I could be putting a lot of pressure, but I'm on my elbows just containing her. Not just because it's my friend's wife, but because that's how I roll. I don't like to smash somebody with pressure. I like to be more transitional. For me, it's more fun, and I also feel like it leads to better jujitsu. So here I have her on her back in the top of her half guard, which is a very advantageous position for me. She was able to make space by bringing in her left elbow. She's very strong. She's probably, I don't know how old, but at least 10 years younger than me. Overall, I'm probably stronger than she is, but she has better ability to continue attacking. So she has better fast twitch muscle resiliency. Whereas after I launch a couple of attacks, it doesn't, I lose my uh, ability to keep striking. So here I have like an Aoki lock, but I'm not finishing it. Now I'm in what looks like an ankle lock position, but again, my legs aren't in a position to finish, but it's gonna prevent her from standing. So here I brought my knee in the middle and I'm starting to think about finishing jokingly. She offers a lot of resistance. When you look at somebody like Crystal, even though I might be, you know, winning, if she went against a guy that wasn't trained and he was trying to do something to her that she didn't want, it would never happen. Just because she's too squirmy and hard to hold down. If you have to be a jiu-jitsu expert to hold her down, that's a good thing. So there I went for a quick toe hold. I transitioned to like a north-south. I love this position when I'm on top. I don't really like side control. I like like a north-south side control. So she has her frame in. I switch my hips. I'm looking to isolate her arm, perhaps do a step over arm bar. These are submission only rounds. So we go until there's a submission. I think the timer's at eight minutes or something. Could be less on this round. I know the second round that's eight minutes. So there she came up. Again, I'm being very transitional maybe slightly more transitional than I would be with a tougher opponent. But this is what you should do when you're going against a white belt or a blue belt. Instead of smashing them, be more transitional. See where the jiu-jitsu takes you. So here I'm looking to isolate her arm for per Americana, but she's resisting. If she gives enough resistance and I feel myself using too much effort, I switch to something else. And that's a good way to go anyway. So here I'm looking to pick her up so I could get my knee behind her back and attack that left arm. But she's doing a good job of framing with both hands, which I call an A-frame. Whenever you put your hands together in frame, it's very powerful. Otherwise, it's just one arm. And one arm is, unless you're super strong, it's tough to frame with one arm. It's just not efficient. Even if you are strong, you'll wear out. So there I threatened the toe hold and stepped over to mount. So here I am looking to set up the Ezekiel. So I have 
one arm behind her head and the other arm chopping down into her throat. And I was able to complete the submission. I did it incrementally, not like a crazy person. So that's round one. That's Skyler running by. The kids are really good at jiu-jitsu also. I'm not sure what kid belts they are, but it's a, it's a pretty good level. I think everyone competes, except the cat. He's more of a hobbyist. So now this is round two. This is a little bit while later. This isn't right after the other round, so she did have a chance to rest. There I show a, a pushback. It doesn't look like anything, but it's a, it's a great ability to be able to push someone off balance when you sense it. So I didn't get up and like dominate her after that, but it just, it feels really cool to be able to do that. So there I was controlling her right arm enough to sweep her over with my right hook. As you could see, I let her break my posture there. I knew what she wanted and I just pretty much, I gave it to her because I wanna see where it goes from there. If I just shut down everything she does instantly, I won't get as much out of it and neither will she. So here I'm thinking knee bar. I have my hand weaved through her hips. Gil is watching on the side with Super Mario. Gil scolded me for writing his name with one L on some of the videos. So I'm thinking of making his nickname Gil, Gil with two L's. So here I'm probably thinking guillotine or Dars. So if I could get my arm in deep enough. But now I realize I could just go to the back from there because her arm wasn't defending. Here I want to tip her towards my choking arm, which is my right arm. And now I'm using my left foot to hook her knee so she can't turn back into me. See my left foot tucked under her left knee. And then I just went to the body triangle. I have really long legs, so I could do a body triangle that's more gentle because she has so much space. So here she's back to full guard. If you like that open mat rash guard and the, those X Marshall shorts, they're both available at the X Marshall link in my description. That was a great sweep. It was a half guard butterfly sweep with the underhook. So if you go and you hit that link with 10%, you get 15% off with Jits over 50 now. There's actually a special. So you don't have to buy that. You could buy anything on their page through that link and it helps support the channel and it's all really high quality merch. <laughs> so now I'm sitting into the spider web position. And she was able to push her elbow in. Now I could fight to the death on that and rip her arm out immediately and finish the submission. <laughs> or I could use a more technique driven approach, which gives her a chance to get out and gives me a chance to sharpen my technique. So here I hook her leg so she can't turn away, but I let it go. I kind of want to see what she's trying to do here. And at the same time, I know that the mount is available. See how easily I was able to go right to mount and from mount right to the back. or the side. Either way, she's flanked because her right arm is on my chest and it makes it very hard for her to turn into me. So 
So here I'm in a knee on belly position, but not crushing her. When she bumped, I just went to the other side. I kind of went with it. So now I'm looking for the Dars. I probably could have finished here. But I felt like she was doing a good job defending it and I wanted to see where it went. So I let her out of it and went right to the arm bar, which was waiting there because her elbow was up in the air. She, she didn't even realize it. She probably knows her elbow shouldn't be up in the air. And then from the arm bar to the back. So there's a lot of transitions here. This is the way you should always be transitioning to have an offensive approach. When you're on the offense, your opponent's on the defense and they can't really make a game plan until they put out all the fires that you're causing. So here, I kind of have a feeling the round is coming somewhat to an end, so I just wanted to try and get the submission and I was able to finish with the arm bar. Again, not using a lot of muscle. That's our husband, Gil. You've seen me, you've seen me do rounds with him. And there I was imitating a douche. But anyway, thank you for watching, guys. If you want to help support the channel, I got a next martial link in the description as well as a buy me a coffee. Please like, share, and if you haven't already, subscribe.